Andrew Johnson's presidency was in many ways one of the biggest disasters in American history. Andrew Johnson's refusal to enforce Reconstruction and civil rights across the South for African Americans, as well as his refusal to compromise with Republicans in Congress, ultimately led to the deterioration of race relations in the United States for 150 years following Reconstruction, as well as the suffering of African Americans across the South and the nation abroad. Andrew Johnson was uh, strongly opposed by the radical Republicans who had controlled both the Senate and the House of Representatives. And in fact, by 1868, the House of Representatives had had enough of Andrew Johnson and had voted to impeach him for violating the Tenure of Office Act, which was a law that had prohibited Andrew Johnson from firing any cabinet member without the approval of Congress, or particularly the Senate, However, Andrew Johnson refused to oblige by the law and promptly fired Secretary of War Edward Stanton without the Senate's approval. This led to the House of Representatives voting to impeach him. It was a party line vote with no Democrats voting to save Andrew Johnson, voting to impeach Andrew Johnson. However, in the United States Senate, Andrew Johnson was acquitted of all charges with by just one vote sparing him from being removed from office. That one vote came from Republican Edmund Ross of Kansas, who was in many ways a radical Republican, but he opposed removing Andrew Johnson from office. While many have tried to portray Ross's vote as a vote of courage and uh, more morality, it was in fact quite the opposite, as there is a lot of evidence that shows Edmund Ross was actually bribed to vote to save Andrew Johnson. So let's say in this alternate scenario, Ross votes to convict Andrew Johnson and remove him from office, as does any of the other 10 Republicans who voted to acquit Johnson. This would ultimately lead to Johnson's removal from office, which would be arguably the most embarrassing end to the tenure of any president of the United States. This would be a worse end to the Johnson to any presidency even worse than Nixon's uh, presidency, as Nixon may have resigned on his own accord, but Andrew Johnson was actually removed from office in this alternate scenario. So with Johnson being removed from office, the radical Republicans would finally have more power regarding Reconstruction, and the new president of the United States, or at least acting president, would be Senator Benjamin Wade of Ohio. Now, Benjamin Wade was a radical Republican, even by the standards of the Republican Party. He was strongly in support of Reconstruction and civil rights for African Americans, and he was also opposed to Abraham Lincoln's presidency and, in many ways, his approach towards Reconstruction. He opposed Abraham Lincoln's 10% plan that would allow Southern states to be readmitted to the Union if only 10% of their population agrees to pledge loyalty towards the Union. Senator Wade thought that this proposal did not go far enough, and he wanted 50% of a southern state's uh, population to, be, to have to profess loyalty towards the Union for it to be readmitted. He also wanted each southern state to be forced to ratify the 14th and 15th Amendments, which guaranteed African American civil rights and African American voting rights. Senator Wade's viewpoints were in many ways much more aligned with Thaddeus Stevens's than they were with Abraham Lincoln. Thaddeus Stevens was in many ways the epitome of a radical Republican during the 1860s and even earlier in the 1850s with his support for the abolition of slavery long before it became popular, as well as Thaddeus Stevens's more extreme proposal, which was to take the land of former Confederate slave owners and actually give it towards former slaves so that they could have a leg up in the future. Thaddy Stevens' proposal did not gain traction because there were plenty of moderate Republicans who opposed it, along with Andrew Johnson, who would have definitely vetoed the bill, and unlike other civil rights bills which were passed over Johnson's veto, this bill would not be able to get passed over Johnson's veto because of the intense moderate opposition. However, with the more radical president being in charge, it is actually very possible that Thaddeus Stevens' bill for land would actually get passed through the Senate and the House of Representatives and would get signed by President or acting President Wade 
And then we would see southern plantation land being given towards African Americans. This would be a very interesting proposal and a very interesting thing in our timeline. We would also see that the Confederate States of America, or at least the states that made up the Confederacy, would actually have a much more hard time getting back into the Union because of Wade's proposal, which was that 50% of a southern state would have to profess loyalty towards the Union rather than simply 10%. And I believe that with more stringent requirements being forced for southern states to readmit, be readmitted to the Union, I think instead of in our own timeline, which was the states of North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Louisiana, and Arkansas, all being readmitted to the Union around this timeline. I think only the states of North Carolina, Arkansas, and Louisiana would be readmitted, and that the cotton states of Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, and Florida would instead remain as disenfranchised states and would have to wait a little bit longer to be readmitted into the Union. With more strong uh, support for Reconstruction and a stronger Reconstruction overall, there would have been more significant opposition from Southern whites as well as racists across the South. This would include the Ku Klux Klan and other hate-filled organizations similar to it. And I believe that the Justice Department may in fact have been created earlier, and we would see significant military opposition to the KKK, and greater military enforcement of Reconstruction. I think that President Ulysses S. Grant would still get re-elected in 1868. I don't think Benjamin Wade would have run for re-election or have been re-nominated by the Republicans, simply because Grant was more popular, being a war hero and all. And I think we would still see the same end to Reconstruction that we saw in our own timeline. And really nothing much would change in this scenario regarding Reconstruction because the public would still turn against Reconstruction because of intense Southern opposition, as well as heavy corruption in the Grant administration, and just in general, the, uh, de the desire for reconciliation with Southern whites rather than continue the policy of Reconstruction, which was heavily opposed by them, and just out of a desire to move on. So the process of the, re of the removal of military troops from the South at the end of Reconstruction would have still happened in our own scenario. And the one change I can really say that would happen for sure is we would see impeachment and happen much more commonly because the Tenure of Office Act was actually ruled unconstitutional by the Supreme Court almost 20 years after Andrew Johnson was nearly removed from office. And in this scenario with Johnson actually being removed from office, we would see the Tenure of Office Act would, would be ruled unconstitutional, and thus we would see likely the idea that the President of the United States could be removed from office because of political disagreements rather than actually breaking the law. So that's a key difference we would see in our own scenario, in our timeline today, but other than that, everything else would mostly remain the same. So anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to like this video down below and subscribe to the channel.